everybody, it's Joe here with Deranged. So today we are going to tackle a little topic that uh, has been on my mind a bit lately. It's been on Dave and Garrett's mind for a while. And that is, why did I sell the Honda Talon and why did I choose to go with a KRX4 over the Honda Talon? So we're just going to have a conversation, me and the guys here, uh, and just kind of give you some general thoughts and impressions of why we did, why we went that direction. Here it says conversation for some reason, but yeah. Um, so we'll have a little chat. We'll uh, get into some of the reasons why that I chose to switch to a KRX4 and why I chose that as my family rig. So before we jump in, I'll just say up front, um, we do not discriminate, I guess, against any rigs. Um, there is a place for any machine for a variety of people. Um, I switched to the KRX4 because it was the right machine for my family. Um, the Honda Talon might be the right machine for your family. It just depends on what your needs and wants are and all that kind of stuff. What your priorities are. It's for Dave's and I's family too, bro. It's pro partially for, for Garrett's and or partially for Garrett's and Dave's family, I guess, too. Yeah. Um, but no, that's why that's why we went with the uh, the KRX4 over the Honda Talon. So. With that said, let's uh, let's have a little conversation. So for me, and we're gonna work while we're doing this because I don't know if you can see in the background, the KRX4 is tore apart quite a bit. The interior is all stripped. We are wiring, we are adding some stuff from Viper. We're adding all kinds of crap. So a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna try to work at the same time and uh, you know and do this video. So I'll, uh, I'll start and just say that the first reason that I chose the KRX4 over the Honda Talon or, or the reason I did is, is comfort for everyone. So comfort for the family. So what does that mean? A couple things. Number, number one, top of the list for comfort, uh, for my wife anyway, is um, suspension, ride quality, stuff like that. The, uh, the KRX-4, the ride on the KRX-4 is incomparably, incomparably better than the Honda Talon. Am I right? I think it was better than our Pro XP stock. Yeah. So the ride on the, um, the ride on the stock KRX-4 ES, which is the model we chose, is, is just that good. Right, and for me, comfort is a first priority. It's hard enough to get my family sometimes to join us, and uh, and when the ride is comfortable, it makes it easier. Um, if uh, the rides can be pretty short if it's not comfortable in the back of the cab or in the front of the cab or whatever for the passenger. So, number one, top of my list is comfort. You guys have any thoughts on uh, comfort between the two, comparing the Honda Talon and the KRX4? There's no comparison. No. <laughs> like, and I don't care if you go to Weller, shock therapy, whatever. Yeah, I agree. We spent the money on shock therapy. We didn't do just springs. We did valving and springs. And it did make it better. Yeah. But honestly, it just doesn't compare. Just but with riding. You, know? you can take this machine out off the showroom floor and hit the whoops at 55 miles per hour. Yeah. Loaded with three or four guys in there. Yep. And you could not do that in the Honda Talon. Absolutely not. So we, we took the Talon to um, King of the Hammers, what was it, a year or two ago? A couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. I think it was a year or two ago. After we had work done from shock therapy and after we had new springs on and stuff like that, um, we had, was it just, was it, I think we had four guys in the machine. But man, we hit some moderate to small whoops and we're just bottoming out like crazy. So, yeah, um, wasn't I comfortable. Had COVID stuck in the room. That he was when Garrett had COVID and he was I stuck in the room. Out. I was in the hotel room on an so, air mattress dying. Yeah, he was dying in the hotel room. So, that means that there were just three of us in there. So, there was one person in the back and two of us in the uh, in the front. So, yeah, it, it's just, it's that much better on the KRX4. So, comfort being a top priority for me and my family. Comfort first meaning, or being right, that, that was the top of the list for me. So, anything else on comfort before we move on to something else? No, I, I think we've covered it. Yeah. Just that, that much goes, That goes with like the two seater as well. I think if you're going to compare two seater on the town, two seater KRX, same four seaters, all the same result. You can go with the whoops straight out of the box. 
you know, showroom floor. So your spring sag on KRX, and you got to fix that. Yeah, it, so KRX isn't perfect, right? Um, especially the two seaters from the past. We haven't seen it yet in this four seater ES. Um, but you're going to get some spring sag and a couple other things. It's not perfect by any means, but it is, it's dang good. So, um, next thing real quick on, uh, on comfort as well is legroom. So for me, front seat, there's not a ton difference between the, uh, the Talon and the Carex. It's a little bit better. It sits a little lower in the Carex than it does in the Talon. Um, but I don't find it to be much, like a ton more comfortable. The main reason why is the dead pedal placement in the KRX sucks. Um, that's just because they, you know, there's enough room for extra clearance, I guess, for that front wheel or whatever. But um, but comfort for the for the front passenger for the driver for me, I'm 6'4", 205 now, guys. Lost about 10 pounds now. Still working on it. You kept it off through your vacation. Yeah. Kept it off through the cruise, dude. I went on a seven day cruise. Just so everybody knows here, seven day cruise ate way too freaking much. Only gained two pounds, so lost that. It's gone already. How about the water weight? Dude. Not yeah, water. yeah, water and pastry weight and lots of ice cream weight. But. Well, I haven't watched freaking. I haven't lost a damn thing. So yeah, <laughs> but I haven't tried. Anything, I gained probably like twenty more pounds. Yeah. No, I have not tried. No, there you go. But, but I need to because I'm getting older and it's like making me like pant like a dog more. It's hard to hard to bend over. over. Yeah. So more on comfort though. Um, yeah. Rear passengers, uh, Honda Talon has the stadium seating, which is cool. I like the stadium seating. Um, Carex does not have it, but the back seats are a little bit higher in the, in the Carex, I feel like. Yeah. Um, the seating's a better in the, the seat position, I guess you'd say, is probably better in the Talon, but the um, legroom is better in the Carex 4. So the, that's another thing that's, I mean, it's, it's far and away better. Um, but the KRX4, the legroom in the back of the KRX4 is, uh, if it's not the best there is, it's it's dang close. I, I think it, there's more than the than the Pro XP, right? It's I very similar. Yeah, and and that's I mean to be honest, that's why we bought the Pro XP along with this machine. Is so when we're all riding in it, or if we have it at our house and we're taking different people in it, everybody can fit in no matter who they are. Yeah, and that was the big issue with the Turbo S stuff. There's yeah. no room in the back. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, comfort's a big deal. Um, I feel like the KRX4 was the most uh, comfortable for my family. So, that's it on comfort. Anything else? Yeah, we're good there. Comfort and ride quality, they were kind of the same, right? We kind of handled the bolt there. So, um, what about the... Uh, so, for me, the transmission wasn't really a big deal. Um, the only concern I had with the Talon, there were a couple times where... I smoked the clutch. Like, like we went up to shoot one time, and uh, you can see the smoke just billowing yeah. out of that. You look range. in the you look in the drone footage afterwards, and you can see smoke kind of billowing out from it. And I didn't do anything out of the normal. I mean, I, I hit it just like anybody else would. I held steady on the throttle. Um, yeah. But man, it. The only thing is, is you had 32 inch tires on there. I did have 32s, so that does make a difference. But um, being in low range and all that, you would think. Yeah, it should handle it. I yeah. guess not. I don't know. But that did that did worry me. I wasn't a fan of seeing seeing smoke billowing out the uh, the machine for those clutches because they're it's not cheap, right? Getting clutch work or the clutches replaced on the Honda um, aren't cheap, and and it being covered under warranty is not a guarantee. So from what I've heard, they they might cover one. Um, but that's it, they're not gonna cover it after that, and that's if they cover one, so. Anyway, uh, so, just get a wear item. So the real question is, did you trade one clutch problem for another clutch problem? Yeah, that's the, that's, that, that's the next question, and, and I'm not, I've never not, well, that's not the truth. One of the reasons I went with the Talon is because I had an experience in my Razor where I, I went through a river, and it, uh, the belt slipped, water got in the belt box, and the belt slipped and I almost got stuck in the river with my boss and his dad. And that wasn't a good look, right? And then I didn't like the idea of being stranded out there for it. So one of the reasons I went with the Talon was because of, I was getting rid of the belt. Um, I am a fan of Kawasaki's clutch. It's just so smooth. The engagement is super smooth um, because it's a wet clutch. So uh, whether or not we switched it for another problem, 
I don't know, are there a bunch of problems with the KRX clutch? Um, you know, the weights have been a big thing. It's been um, some issues. Rollers, sheaves. Yeah. yeah, so the weights and stuff like that, they were an issue for the 2022s and below. Supposedly, Kawasaki's done different uh, material for basically all of the potential wear items for the... Um, those, that Viper stuff looks sick, dude. Those red accents, that's awesome. Um, they, they, you know, they did a bunch of stuff with the new weights. We'll see. Uh, new material for them. They're not wearing like they were. Um, not just the weights, but the other sheaves and other kind of stuff in the, in the new clutch as well. So we'll, we'll wait and see on the, on the uh, clutch in the 2023s. Yeah, and for me, with the Honda Talon, I, I really liked... I didn't like all the noise it made, but I really liked how I had the ability to shift it. I liked shifting gears. I also liked being able to run at a higher speed and shifting down to a or shifting up to a higher gear and not having all the motor noise. Yeah. And cruising that that was definitely really nice. Yeah. But I did like that whole sport feel, just shifting and stuff while you're while you're driving. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm. I was a big fan of that as well. That's one thing I don't like the, about the KRX for is at 40 miles an hour you're at 6,000 RPMs or you're at like seven. somewhere around there and that's that's a lot of noise it's not as bad in the front of the four seat because you've got that distance between the two seats and the curve between the motor but it's pretty it's pretty loud oh. uh, so comfort and uh, really that was the top one the top reason I chose the KRX4 over the Talon what else was there um, those holes are so close bro no they're close but not perfect Clutch engagement, um, reliability, really it's comfort, man. Comfort's what it comes down to. That's the biggest reason why. So, I don't have anything against the Talon. I love the Talon. I had a great time in the Honda Talon and, and wouldn't be opposed to going back to another one one day. But, um, but for me, comfort led the day. What else do you guys got? Or what part of now? Oh, we talked about comfort. So you got any other reasons to choose the KRX4 over the Honda Talon? Uh, if you're looking at not upgrading your seats, KRX seats are more comfortable than Talon seats. Yeah. But to be honest with you, KRX seats stock are a lot more comfortable than um, Polaris' seats. Pretty much almost all yeah. of them. Except for uh, Dave's XRC Can-Am actually have really nice seats in it. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah, the KRX4 does have really, really comfortable seats. They are. For stock seats, they, they actually do really well. Yep. I never had problems going on long rides and getting worn out in the stock seats. Yeah. What else we got? Anything? Um, fit and finish? We all yeah, fit and finish. That, that's a good one, dude. Yeah. Um, the, so, Carex isn't perfect on fit and finish. There's a few things here and there. But honestly, Honda could do a much better job than they did with the fit and finish of the KRX, or the, the uh, Honda Talon. Uh, starting with the gauge cluster, not a fan of the gauge cluster. They fixed the placement of it, and when I got it, the 2022 or, or 2021 or whatever, 2020, it was on the uh, center, so you had to look over to see what you were doing. They fixed it and put it behind the steering wheel, which is the right thing to do. Um, but still, it's nowhere near as full of information and intuitive and useful as the KRX4s is, or Can-Ams even, for that matter. Um, and definitely Polaris's. So uh, the doors on the Honda Talon just they're not good. They're just not good. Um, rattly. You, you can do all kinds of jerry rigs to get them to stop rattling. Why are you so nitpicky? Dude? These are off-road machines. <laughs> yeah, like, they are. Who cares? They are. Well, it's an off-road machine that you pay twenty six, twenty eight, thirty thousand dollars for. So I mean, if you're going to ask that kind of money, you better have doors that don't rattle. So. Mine's um, a lot of Jeep. <laughs> Might as well have Dave, Dave's just bringing up all the Facebook and social media comments. Yeah. So, for me, you got fit and finish, comfort. Those are the, big, the, the biggest ones, comfort. Fit and finish is in there as well. Anything else from you guys? Um, fit and finish, I, I think you know that the Kawasaki has its own set of issues, even on the doors. Like, they got to find a different way to put these together yeah. on the top. Um, and then some of the other stuff too, like with holes and dust, it, it's a, I compare it a lot to the Honda Talon. It's not quite sealed off like it should be. Um, where Dave's XRC by far surpassed both of our machines with that. 
Mm -hmm. um, as you guys know, if you remember, we did a series where we took each other's machines or took our own machines and moved them all around and had a good month with each of them and did our own reviews on it. And that's where we kind of learned a lot that a lot of it, you know, the fit and finish and stuff were a lot on the same on these cars until you got to um, like Dave's XRC and then by far the R Max and we got in that next year was able to test out. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely uh, people who are companies, manufacturers that do better than others in that realm. So, anyway, uh, anything else to add before I close this one up, guys? No, I think I, mean, I think you nailed everything about why you made the choice, you know, to, to make a change. I know we all talked about it. It's kind of like, you know, it's it's a group machine, but at the same time, like we learned a lot and. Joe's been pretty much been kind of the taking lead on building this machine because we did we did it opposite on the Pro XP and yeah. what do they say too many too many chiefs in the kitchen or something? Yeah, we had too many chiefs, chiefs and not, not enough Indians. Indians. Yeah, so we needed to figure so out. <laughs> so hey, we had to figure out hey, how to make that simple. I'm like one quarter Native American, so yeah, and you know what? Oh, Chickasaw. I got to be impressed. Yeah, yeah and. and I'm Spanish, but I don't even care. We're not down with that wool crap. So, at the yeah. end of the day, we don't care. But yeah. and the, the point is, is like after all of our experience, and they were finally releasing a four seater, it, it was kind of like a no brainer to go that direction. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. So I'm sure you'll have some comments. Uh, leave them in the in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion there. I'm sure there'll be some thoughts both ways uh, on which machine is better and why. Um, let us know in the, in the comments down below. Um, obviously, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And like I said at the beginning, there's a perfect machine for everyone, and the KRX4 or the Honda Talon is not the perfect machine for everyone. It's whatever machine fits exactly what you want and you need. So um, with, uh, with the KRX4, it's just it what fit, it's what fit my family and what fit our, um, our needs uh, for what we do together. So anyways... I guess we'll leave it at that. Like I said, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, check out the, uh, the links down there. There's a variety of ways you can support the channel down there, including buying parts from our website. We have a ton of new parts on there. Um, some of the parts, yes, we know you can go buy them straight from the manufacturer. We'll give them, to the same, we'll give them to you for the same price or sometimes better, and you're helping us out. So choose to go that direction. It's better. You'll get the same warranty and all that kind of crap, so don't worry about it. Uh, but anyway, check out the links down in the description and, and uh, I guess ride safe and pack out what you pack in. And yeah, hang on, man, one more thing. Wait, hold up. Yeah, for all of you guys with the UTV Utah class that are crying on freaking social media yeah. about it, okay. stop your freaking boobing. Like, seriously, <laughs> dude. Seriously. Uh, it's so 30, 20 to 30 minutes. We have to free. explain this now, dude. Not everybody's it's in Utah. Simple. Yeah, but so, freaking a. quick explanation while the credits roll, that we, as if we have credits. It's free. Um, Utah requires that you take a class now, 30-minute class, online before you ride outdoors off-road in Utah. Some people are opposed. Some people are for it. I'm 100% for it. The reason I'm for it is because there are way too many people that their first experience in outdoors is a 200-horsepower side-by-side and they have no idea how to respect the trails, respect the land, and have common courtesy when they're I riding. So, hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent on board. Some are, yeah, some are. are. Is what it is. So anyway, that's what Garrett's referencing. So, like I said, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, uh, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hey, we'll, we'll put a link to the class. Oh yeah. Hey, why not? Yeah, we'll link the class down below so you can take it. Because if you're coming to Utah, yeah, you have to take it anyway. So it doesn't matter if you're in state or out of state. You're taking it. Everybody's taking. It. Otherwise, you get a ticket, big old ticket. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one.